Hey everyone, today is January 17th, 2024, and we're gonna be going camping today out in the forest at the tank camp. I recently made this new trail here because it's much flatter than the old one we used to have. So about a week ago, I had the idea to turn this giant propane tank that I've been using as a wood stove for the past three years into a meat smoker. And we'll be using that today while we're camping out here. It's so quiet and nice out. The snow falling acts like insulation in the air. Right now it's about 8 a.m. It should snow like this until noon. We're gonna pick up maybe two to five inches, they say. And then I'll set up a tent. I have this nice flat spot I cleared out. This is where I'm gonna be setting up my tent. Ooh, look at this tree. That's most likely gonna die. Uh, it's definitely not gonna recover from that. It's still standing almost straight. It's just stuck in this neighboring eastern white pine. This is a balsam fir itself, and they're very weak. We had some of the strongest winds I've seen in, I think, in forever. A couple days ago, we only had one tree fall over. And now I just found this. But it's stuck pretty well. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. Hopefully the next windstorm will push it over. So here's the smoker. There's a box of apple wood we used last time. And here's a full box we can cook something with today. Apple barbecue smoking chunks. So we got these latches here. Can open it on up. Can fill it up with wood. Let it heat up nicely. And then we can, once it gets down to nice hot coals, we'll throw that stuff in there, shut it, so it can't get enough oxygen to combust. It'll just smoke for hours. And we got our temperature gauge there. You want it between two and 300. When you're smoking meats, it'll come out really nice. Wow, that is pretty. Look at that, the temper of the copper got ruined. It looks like a rainbow. So let's go grab some firewood and load it on up. Then we'll set up our tent while the fire's heating up. This campsite is only about a five minute walk behind the house. So it'll be easy to collect things if I forget anything. I haven't been out on these trails since the windstorm and there's a good amount of sticks and twigs. Right here's a bridge with a little stream going under it. Yep, yeah. I haven't been out here since the windstorm. Have we lost any trees? It looks like so far, just a bunch of branches down. Last year, during a windstorm in December of 2022, we lost, it was a big blowdown, and we have since cut it all up. We lost 50 trees on the property that day, maybe 20 in this clearing. Right up there, we got a red squirrel. I'm amazed we didn't have any more trees come down. The other day we had over 60 mile an hour winds gushing through here for like more than 12 hours. All the trees were, cause these are skinny, they were swaying and almost pointing at a 90 degree. Right here we got some bunny tracks. Eh, we lost another little tree. Still no severe damage. We're now coming up on the pallet house. All right, everyone. So I got this tent right here on Walmart's discount shelf for $24 instead of 40. And we're gonna set this thing up today and see how it works. So it's probably obviously a summer tent, but it's really small, that's why I bought it. Maybe it'll be good, maybe it won't. Well, we're gonna see. Nice and small, it should be very easy to set up, and we can run a little buddy heater in there along with our sleeping bag. If I think it's cold enough, usually I don't even use sleeping bags when I'm camping, because I don't think it gets cold enough to warrant that, but I do have a couple. This right here is a negative 30 sleeping bag, 
two person. And this sleeping bag right here is supposed to be just to the freezing mark, not as heavy duty. But I've used that one before and it's worked pretty well.
All right, everyone. I've just collected a whole bunch of kindling. Now we're gonna load this thing up, throw some of the bigger logs on top of it. Hopefully the kindling can get it going. In this kind of weather, I don't think I'm gonna be finding birch bark laying on the ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and find a whole bunch of teeny, teeny twigs that should flare up pretty easily. All right, I think we got enough in there for now. All right, everyone. See, I just went ahead and collected some much finer sticks. These with a lighter should light right up, make a big enough flame to get these bigger dry sticks going. So we go ahead and jam that underneath there. And if everything's dry enough, that should light it on up. All right, let's see if we can get that to light up. Look how fast that snow's melting. We got a steady stream, almost two steady streams right there, dripping all over. Look at it dripping down through the door. Wow, look at that. It's trickling all around the entire tank. That's melting fast. That snow will be gone pretty soon off the entire top because those flames are starting to go good now. All that kindling paid off. And look, I did actually find a piece of birch bark after all. The snow in the trees looks absolutely beautiful. While we have over a foot of snow in the yard, because it's all stuck in the trees out here in the forest, I'd say we have six inches, half of it's stuck up there. So if we get a big wind, we're gonna be very cold when that starts falling. All right, everyone, this thing is heating up nice. The wind keeps switching directions. You see how it's all smoky over there? Well, it just switched here, going up onto the trees. Are we gonna produce enough heat down here where some of that'll start falling? Sometimes I would think yes today, because it's eight degrees, I don't think we're gonna produce enough heat where it actually reaches up there, where it starts knocking the snow down. Tonight's supposed to be even colder. I hear there's still a little bit of water. For the most part, this thing is just too hot to touch. Yep, too hot, down low, even hotter. Snow is gone, completely dried up. Now we're just waiting for this thing to start raging. And now it's a good heat source. I can sit in front of it, warm up. Now we're gonna go ahead and start setting the tent up. Later on, I'm actually gonna cook with this thing as a smoker. We've already got up to about 140 degrees. I wonder how hot this thing will get. Sometimes the wood stove in the house can get up to around 500. All right, everyone, this thing's been heating up now. It's only been another 10 minutes and it's starting to finally burn clean. Give it a little bit longer. Once it gets burning hot enough, it won't be making any smoke at all. Because the hotter it is, the bigger the air current getting sucked through there. And the way this thing works, if you saw my videos from years ago titled Fire NATO, the way it sucks it in there, it kind of spins around and comes out. With all that air mixing with it, it burns off everything. So once it gets hotter, that spiral will get going faster and faster until it doesn't make smoke anymore. 
We got some water boiling out of those bolt holes. All right, everyone, about 10 minutes later, it's now burning perfectly clean. You can just see the wavy waves of heat coming off the top. Zero smoke. Up top, you can see a few of the branches swaying, only above the stove, because it's the heat making it sway like that, the air currents it's making. Look inside, it's burning very hot, very nice. Right now, the air is still, there's no wind. So if I'm standing within 10 feet of this, I can feel it. It's making the campsite nice and warm, like a patio heater. Now look at that, we have now reached 400 degrees. That's probably where it's gonna top out, unless I throw more wood in, which I will shortly. Let's go set up that tent. First time setting it up, it looks like it's gonna be very easy. All right, everyone. So that tent went up very easily. That tent is a little bit smaller than I thought it was. When I saw the measurement 72 inches, I thought that was gonna look a little bit bigger, but it's still big enough to fit in. And I just sat right here next to the wood stove, warming my hands up. I took my gloves off to set that up because some of the things are a little bit difficult to do with gloves. So this is a summer tent which means it will be very drafty, but that's okay. I'm gonna try out for the very first time ever my negative 30 sleeping bag tonight in there. And I'll also bring a little buddy heater in there with some gas cans if I need it. So what makes a summer tent versus a winter tent? A winter tent would not have all the vents. You see, if this top cover, which protects you from the rain and wind, wasn't there, like if you're camping in the summer and you wanna look up at the stars, you don't need this top part. You see, the entire top is a screen. Three walls of this thing are a screen. Any wind is able to get in there. So it's not much of a temperature shelter at all. My other tent I usually use in the winter, which is technically a summer tent, actually can keep its heat pretty well with a little buddy heater. I can get it to room temperature in there. This one, that looks impossible. So I think it's a good night to try out my negative 30 sleeping bag in there. Think it'll do very well. Stove has been maintaining this temperature for a while, right around 400. Keep in mind, because it's so cold out, it's about 8 degrees out today for the high. That is probably a little bit warmer since it's a magnetic external one. So it probably is a little bit warmer in there. The fire's starting to die down. We're going to go ahead and throw some extra stuff in there. Ooh, here comes a big gust of wind. Everything's falling down from the trees. I like that sizzling sound as it falls down onto the stove. Good thing we got the tent set up. I don't care if all the snow falls down now. I just brought out the negative 30 sleeping bag and we're gonna see now how this thing holds up. I have very low hopes for getting it back in the bag it came in because it was a challenge even getting it out of that bag they had it packed in there so tight from the factory so unlike my other sleeping bag this one does not have any sort of pillow on it and I don't see it the top doesn't seem to like it closes up at all but this is a two-person sleeping bag I bought about two years ago now never used it before it's got that nice orange and green plaid on the inside it feels like it's going to be very warm. It's very thick, very dense feeling. And so, yeah, I will have to bring a pillow out. This tent does not have, I don't think it has enough room for me to completely spread out, but that's okay. As you can see, the temperature went down, but it'll quickly go back up now that the wood is finally starting to catch that I just threw on the top. Last year, I made a camping video right here. I put a tarp up over these two trees that fell in opposite directions during different storms. 
That one fell about a year ago. That one fell about three years ago. Totally different storms, just a nice coincidence. And we had a pretty nice tent in there. We put a wood stove in the tent. But here are some logs that we cut up during that storm. They've been here for about a year. Might not be completely seasoned yet, but I'm gonna throw some of these whole logs in the stove right now because that stove is not very efficient. It burns through wood actually very fast. So I'm gonna try throwing in some entire logs in there to help it slow itself down. All right, now that'll burn for a long time. Filled it up with entire logs. That'll smolder down to some really good ashes while we go in and prepare the chicken I bought. Oh, here comes another gust of wind. Whoa, that was a, this is a strong one. All right, everyone, I've been letting this thing die down for the past two hours. It's once again smokeless. Let's go ahead and open it up. It's gonna be very hot. There we go. Those logs have burned down pretty nice. Those entire rounds went down a bunch. And this is really cool. Look at the edge right here. If I zoom in, look at how these little ice crystals everywhere are pointing towards the stove. It's really cool how it's probably going to melt all around itself down to the ground. I just went ahead and bought some rebar. I think I'm going to go ahead and leave that copper pipe in there. Since it's bent on the ends, it can't warp anymore if we put something heavy hanging in there. But to make better use of the smoker, what I'm going to do now is these, I'm going to use maybe three, probably just two. I want to put through here and through here so that this grate, hopefully it fits through the door, can be used in there for other food. Ah, doesn't fit by so little. Maybe I can slightly bend the sides. Let's see if that'll work. Yep, I think that's gonna be what we're gonna do. Slightly bend just the sides, keeping the middle flat. Will that fit in there now? Yes, it will, perfect. And this is the same grate we also use on the top for cooking food. And I'm actually gonna cook some food right now on the top before we make it into a smoker. So let's get that chimney cap off somehow. There we go. That can cool down in the snow while this heats up and starts sanitizing. All right, everyone, perfect. This piece of rebar I'll just use as a poker stick. Those two, I eyeballed it pretty well. From the weld, I eyeballed it about two inches each one. It looks perfectly flat in there. I can put that grate across that. And tonight we're gonna be grilling up some chicken legs on there is what I decided. And these extra parts here, I can dry socks or stuff on them if we ever get wet while camping out here. Right now, the current air temperature is about 15 or so. It went up a little bit. And this thing here is reading 300, but I have the doors open, so it would get a little hotter if they were shut. I just want to move around some of the stuff. There we go. Flare up nicely.
I'm gonna go ahead and cook these peas up on top while the grate's up there before we put it back into a smoker mode. This thing's running pretty hot. Shouldn't take more than five, 10 minutes to get nice and heated. All right, about five minutes later, our food is just about ready to take off the top. We touch that. Ooh. Maybe leave it on for another minute. It's just starting to warm up. I was able to pick the pan up and it's not hot. Is the edge of this hot? Nope, just above the exhaust. It's so cold out that it's not able to radiate through the metal, so, or transfer through the metal. Just knock that off. Then it'll be perfectly cool. We can put that inside. Later on, the chimney cap is now cool. Go ahead and put that thing back on top. And let's sit down and eat. Perfect. All right, everyone, now it's time to prepare the meat. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of this container Put it onto that cookie sheet and I'm going to cover it with salt and poultry seasoning. All right, everyone, time to get this grate in there and start smoking. There we go. Ouch. Go ahead and throw all the chicken in there. And there are 14 pieces in there. Go ahead, shut the top door. Nice. Go down low. Wash my hands off briefly in the snow. I'll wash them off with soap in a bit when I get back inside. Now it's time to throw the smoking wood in there. So basically this comes from an apple orchard when a tree gets sick, old where it doesn't really produce apples anymore, or when they have to do trimming. They'll sell the apple wood. So let's stir this around, get some nice red embers to put it on top of. Good enough. All that smoking wood in there. Time to shut the door. Smother the fire. Nice. And just leave it like that for the next two to four hours. It's now been about 20 minutes. Still got some good smoke going on as the sun is slowly setting. Go ahead and open the firebox. Just take a look at how quickly the smoke starts moving out of the way when we let fresh air in. Whoa, look at it. Just clearing. Oh, it already combusted. That's good, it's staying nice and hot in there where it can easily combust when you just open it up like this. Everything outside is looking very, very pretty with the snow. Even the giant birdhouse over there. We got a little bit of a sunset left. Not much though. All right, everyone, it's been another half hour and somehow the sunset looks like it got even stronger. It's brighter out, look at the sky. It looks prettier. All right, the chicken's been in here for about one hour, so let's open it up and see. How's it doing? How's it looking there? Oh, look at that, the flames fired up real fast. That looks good, doesn't it? It's caramelizing really nice. Just gonna go ahead and flip everything.
it looks like it's doing real good. Look at that. Shut the door, smother the flames back out, and let it cool back down. Those flames will die within a few seconds. Yep, they're just about gone once again. We're smothering it. The sun is going down fast. We got this tree here with the break. We also got this cool looking one. Maybe got hit by lightning, see how it swirls all around it. And up top, we got the moon. Take a look inside of this tree. Is that the remains and the dust from carpenter ants? Maybe eating it, weakening it, or just rot? Because look what happens if I go in here and touch it. It feels incredibly soft, and it's really fine like curry powder. Look at that. See that? It's like dust in there on, on everything. It's ultra fine dust. It literally feels soft touching the insides of the tree. So it is very, very cold out. We go over here, look at the thermometer. It's now down to about five degrees. Tonight will be down below zero. Zero is negative 17 Celsius. And I took the gauge off of this because the gauge was telling me this thing was running at like 120. And there's just no way. Because if this was 120, I would have no problem keeping my hand on that, but I just can't. It's the breeze in this extremely frigid weather making that so it, it's not telling me an accurate result. I'd trust it if it was summer and it wasn't being affected that much. So just to see what the accurate temp was, temporarily put it inside the door before it gets all sooted up. Let's see what it actually is inside. Yeah, look at that. It's showing 250. Can I touch that? Yeah, uh, quickly I can touch it and get it back out. So yeah, I'm not going to keep it in there because it's going to turn black where I can't even read it. But that just shows you how much it being cold out affects this thing, this external gauge. And when I get the chance, I'm going to buy one that's also magnetic, but you drill a hole and the probe is actually way inside. Yeah, look at it. It's already dropping way back down. So just the cold temperature is making that thing over 150 degrees off. On nights when it's really cold like this, I love how the snow becomes squeaky. I love that. It should get even squeakier later this week. We're going to have a night that's like negative 20 and I'm going to bring the pressure washer outside with the uh, hot water. The water in my house, I have the water heater turned up to about 140 right now, and the pressure washer says do not exceed 140, so we're going to do exactly that and see if we can make some big steam clouds. We usually bring the hot water out every year with the garden hose and sprinklers, and it looks pretty cool, but a pressure washer goes a lot further, and it's a lot more water efficient, so we won't keep running the tank in the basement cold. This is, we put a bunch of half rotten apples out hoping we can get some deer to come by. All right, everyone. It's now been another half hour. We're gonna check on it. I think I'm gonna grab one of them, get it out of here. And I'm gonna give one a taste test. Get it, cut one of them open, see if they're done. They look really good. That skin's gonna taste real good on those. Is it gonna combust into flames again? We'll see. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of the big ones as a test to see if they're cooked through. Right here, you see the salt kind of caramelized and it dripped down the side of it and that makes it more crispy and adds to the smoke flavor. I also decided to add the chicken seasoning today to see if it tastes better or not. We'll give that a couple minutes to cool. Over here I got some propane heaters just in case it gets really cold in there. I understand it's a summer tent and it can't hold heat, it'll basically leave. But there's no wind, so maybe it'll pool in the ceiling. But I don't think we'll need the heaters, I got that really good sleeping bag. I brought out a pillow, and right there's a couple of lights and power banks. The snow is beautiful. This camera light works awesome. This is a diving lamp, it's extremely bright, but it only lasts about 30 minutes as it consumes a lot of power. It's this thing right here. Full metal in these temperatures it's nice to hold on to because it generates heat. Low, oh, medium and low, off. 
It's got red, which looks really cool against all the trees. Got blue, that looks really cool. And if you press it fast, it's got police lights. Looks like police lights anyways. That looked awesome. I wonder how the chicken will look with those weird color lights. All right, let's give it a try. When it's this cold out, you don't really have to wait for food to cool that much. Open it up. Very juicy. It's actually still too hot. Nice and cool. It's nice and like... It's lukewarm, but it's so cold that it's steaming. Awesome, it's cooked all the way through, nice and tender. Good smoky flavor, it was in there about three hours. That's really good. And something like a coyote can eat that. This time of year, the only thing that would probably come through the campsite is a coyote or maybe a raccoon, and they're not gonna mess with you in the tent. In the summertime, I wouldn't be leaving any food around, and I also wouldn't be camping out here like this with something that's gonna smell like meat all night because we have a lot of bears in the summertime. But they're hibernating. Bears typically go into hibernation if temperatures are below 40, and we're much colder than that tonight. All right, everyone, I'm about to cook something else on the top to have with my chicken, probably more vegetables, so I'm gonna convert this thing back into a grill, and that chicken's all done. We're gonna get that on, out onto a platter. So I'm gonna start off by making a little table. See how hot this is inside. Chicken looks really good. Let's see if we can get fire going in there again. And the ones I'm using as a table, I'll throw those in there later. Close it back up. And we'll keep the bottom one open while we're using it as a grill. Let that thing heat back up, give it another 20 minutes, and that will have flames all the way up inside it once again. Check it out, the chicken looks really good. It's caramelized, not burnt. I was just eating the skin, it's really good. Look at this, got a big crater there where a giant parasite crawled out of it while cooking. But they look really good. Here's what they looked like before, and here's what they look like after, nice and cooked. Going good, starting to smoke up again. You saw, before I got the chicken out, the smoke was almost gone because the smoking wood we threw in, it's gone. All right, everyone, I'm back outside with the four pieces I'm gonna have for dinner. And now I'm gonna open up a can of carrots and start heating that up on top. You might be able to hear the crackling. The fire is heating back up once again. I love nights like this. It's extremely cold but the air is perfectly still. Now, if there was just the slightest breeze, these negative temperatures would be awful, but it's delightful right now. Put them into the pan. Here we go. And put them up on top of the stove for like 10 minutes. Maybe 10 minutes. It's basically just hot air coming out the top. Hasn't really fired up that much yet. See the fire down below? It's still gotta climb up between all those logs. And they're big logs, it'll take a bit.
I'm just trying to warm my hands up a little bit at the moment after washing them off in the snow. I had to stop sitting on that log because I'm literally sitting on a block of ice and it started to become numb after a while. Let's see if the stuff up top has heated at all. Not yet. But this is a good spot to just warm my hands. It's not that hot in there. Although the smoke is making my eyes tear up. All right, everyone, the carrots are just about heated up. You see, I'm able to touch everything freely. It's not that hot, but they're warmed up just enough to enjoy. See, they're steaming. Fire is finally starting to take off. I'm hoping this fire will run all night. I'm going to load this thing with big logs before I go in the tent. And hopefully I'll have some nice crackling to listen to. And hopefully it'll be warm enough to fire back up in the morning and have breakfast. For whatever reason, if it doesn't keep its heat all night where it can just combust in the morning, I'll probably just skip breakfast because it's so hard to get this thing running in the cold like this. And I forgot my fork, but it's okay. The snow is even squeakier now. It's only nine o'clock at night, but the temperature is plunging really fast. We have clear skies, you can see the moon, a lot of stars. That means maximum radiational cooling. It actually stays a bit warmer when it's windy. It being very still allows the temperatures to plunge even further. All the heat radiates back out into space when the sky is clear like that. We're still running very hot with the stove. Still too hot to touch. Time to throw a little bit more fuel into it. Just give it a check. Yep, still those big rounds are what keeps this thing going. The split firewood burns way too fast, so I think I'm about to grab the sled and we're gonna go grab some more rounds and then we'll have a little stockpile here for later on in the night. The temperature actually has not budged. It maybe went up a degree in the past four hours. But still, everything feels slipperier and more crunchy. I guess this area slightly melted and refroze, and that's why it's so slippery, but the crunchiness and squeakiness of the snow sounds a lot more than before. So we're gonna throw some more wood in there. Boonk. Keep forgetting that that stuff's in there. The rebar pieces, I could slide those out when I'm not using them. So I'm throwing some of this small stuff in there just to create some flames while we run off for like 10 minutes and grab more rounds, which are not that far away. This firewood pile, I probably could burn some of it, but it's also pretty rotten. That's why I've always avoided burning it. That must have been stacked there a decade ago. But here's what we're gonna grab. I'm gonna kick a few of them free. Actually, as many as I can free. I wonder how many I'll actually get unstuck without a mallet or a sledgehammer. Now that I broke one, I can maybe use that to break others. All right, that's what I brought back. On the way back, I accidentally, with the sled, bumped into a tree and all the snow in that tree fell down onto me and down my neck, it felt so cold. All right, everyone, it's now about 10.30. Temperature actually went back up a little bit to five, or I think eight, actually. 
That typically happens when it starts to get a little breezy. The temperature goes up for some reason. It's getting breezy. I'm gonna throw those two logs in there now, and now we're gonna go to another pile in the woods and try to get even more logs. Let's load it up. Melting's not as effective with the breeze. All right, my light's getting a little dim. Let's go out into the woods. Loaded that a lot more. Let's just wait for that to pick up. See what it looks like in a little while. All right, everyone, I'm finally starting to get tired. It's right after midnight. Stove is still going hot. We're gonna load it up with a bunch of stuff and hope it's still able to combust in the morning. I'm gonna throw all these logs in there right now and see. Actually, looks like it's not doing that great. These logs aren't burning too well. Let me kick that around and try to stir this thing back up a bit. All right, everyone. So I poked it around and I threw all the smaller logs in there. Smaller logs are a lot lighter because they're a lot drier. And look, we kicked it around and we did get flames going again. So I'm going to wait like 30 minutes, hope the flames get bigger, throw all those big logs in there, and hope it can make its way until the morning. All right, everyone, we are gonna close this thing up for the night. We got the fire going pretty well. Doesn't look like it, but let me show you. I don't know if you can tell, but it's raging against the back wall. It's like sucking it right through that hole, and we got a good amount of flame going on in the back now. You can see the spark shooting. Now, I purposely put some of them on the grate because I'm hoping that the fire does well. It dries those out really nice without burning them, possibly. Then we'll throw them down in there in the morning. We'll see what happens. We got it going pretty well. Gonna shut the top door, let it build more heat in there. Maybe it can dry some things before the fire gets up there. And we'll leave the front of it wide open and time to head on over and go to sleep. Took a couple of minutes to get this one actually lit. So, look at that, we got the pilot light. We're gonna go ahead and turn it on. Turn it up high and just gonna monitor it. Now it doesn't usually get hot down here, so it won't burn the bed. Just gotta keep an eye on that. Do you see the snow down inside there? This one's not lighting, but I'm gonna maybe melt that out around the ignition so that one can get going too. This will be turning red hot in a minute. We'll see how hot it gets in here. Just monitoring this. Definitely not leaving it running while I'm sleeping. Just hoping to get the chill out of here. Maybe heat the bed up a little bit, because this is very cold in here. I'll try to set the camera up in the corner. There might be enough room. It's a very small tent. I definitely cannot spread out in here. This is definitely a kid's tent, or a tent that someone would let a dog be in. This is very small. I definitely cannot stretch out comfortably, but I'm sure I'll be able to sleep on my side without a problem. I usually sleep on my side anyways. So it's negative one outside. Let's see what, how warm we can get it in here. I don't think we'll get it above freezing. This thing is gonna take a while to heat up. This heater's going from very cold. And I also took the other propane tank off because it is pretty weak, not much in it. This is nice. Putting my feet up here in front of the heater. Toes are a little bit cold, so this will warm them up nice. This tent actually got warm. Like I want to take my jacket off with these two things. See, it's it's literally wide open. If it wasn't for this covering, you can have three sides of the tent just screen. So there's a good draft, but not that much of a draft because it's not windy. I obviously feel a little bit of cold air pouring in that these are consuming, and then the hot air is being forced out the top, but 
Other than that, if these are running, it's comfortably warm in here. Nice. And because it's nice and warm in here, the tanks won't freeze. I've been in situations where it's so cold outside, the propane tanks freeze. Because as the propane's being used, the chemical reaction of it going from a liquidified propane to a gas to be burned creates a lot of cold. And they'll actually freeze up when they're like half empty if I was burning them outside. But when they're in a nice warm place, and I've also done this before, I've also like held them like this, heating them up a little bit, put them back in, you know, switching them back and forth when you have a bunch of half empty ones. I've had to do that when it's really cold out. But I, I recently bought an adapter actually. If I ever camp somewhere where I really know I'm gonna need these, I brought a big grill tank. That will not freeze for a very long time. I got the adapter. Anybody who's used that little buddy heater before might know that they do freeze often. So you gotta shake them sometimes to get every little bit of liquefied propane to get turned into a gas to be able to burn it. We officially hit the freezing mark. Look at that. This tent is getting warmer than I thought and it's still climbing. Believe me, the freezing mark feels awesome when you were just outside for hours in negative one, negative 18 Celsius. That is really cold out there. So I'm confident we're gonna have a really good night. Just put a new propane can on that. My knees are actually very hot to the touch. The bed is, it, it's not that hot like it's gonna burn, but it feels like clothing that just got pulled out of a hot dryer. Yeah, so this bed just literally heated the bed for me and the bed will be nice to get into and we're hovering around that freezing mark. This thing heated up nice. This tent exceeded my expectations for keeping warmth and protection from the wind. Very good. Now we're gonna go ahead and try to get underneath the covers. Let me go ahead and shut these heaters down, give them a minute to cool down so I don't tip it over and have that hot great burn the bed. Wow, look how slow the digital display is in this cold weather. All right, I got my light set up. The camera and the light are attached to power banks. I'll double check one more time and make sure they're running before I go to sleep. Time to get underneath the covers and see how this goes. I still got one buddy heater here running at the time being. We've heated up nicely. See about getting in this sleeping bag for the very first time. Wow, this feels heavy duty. This feels really nice. Yeah, we're gonna have a good night sleeping. I just see it. Shut this heater off. Let this one start cooling. Its propane tank is just about dead. But I'll keep the heater close to me. He can start it up if I need to. Can, everyone can slowly watch that die out tonight. That light's just about done. Outside, I can hear it loudly. That fire picked up and is roaring right now. Let's we'll see if it still goes in the morning. This is a nice, thick sleeping bag.
All right, everyone, it's now 9 in the morning, and I got about six good hours of sleep, and I woke up about halfway between the six hours, had to use the bathroom, went back to bed. Now I'm just getting the chill out of here, warming myself back up. I'll give myself like a half an hour, get going again. I looked outside, the, the smoker is still smoking quite a bunch. Last night, I could hear it roaring and crackling, so... Hopefully it heated itself back up that we might be able to use it when we get back out there. So, as soon as I shut these off, I'm going to throw everything outside, try to clean up the inside of the tent before I even leave, and that'll make things a lot easier. And hopefully while I'm making breakfast, I can collapse the tent and get the tent squared away. I had a good night's sleep in here. I just put my head underneath the sleeping bag for a while, and my breath actually kept the inside Toasty warm. This was a very warm sleeping bag. Oh, here comes a gust of wind. You can hear all the snow falling down on top of us. And now that it's nice and warm in here, I'm preheating my boots, gloves, socks, and we're about to go outside now. All right, everyone, it's 9.30 in the morning and I'm outside. It's still smoking in there. Let's see if we can drop these logs that I put up top. Wow, some of them actually burned out of there. This thing must have been raging last night. Definitely, let's even turn black. Drop those in the bottom. Grab our poker stick. Oh, I see red coals. Maybe we can kick, kick something up in there, hopefully. With the things I just dropped down there. There's not much red coals, but maybe we'll get lucky. This thing is still a little bit warm. Maybe we can kindle some sort of fire in there. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and start bringing some of this stuff back to the house. I think I'm going to roll the sleeping bag up in the house. Give it a quick chance to dry before I roll it back up. And I'll maybe come back out here with a little bit of kindling. Okay, the smoker is now smoking once again just by poking around the embers in there. And I just threw a bunch of twigs in there. If it gets going, we'll cook something. If not, that's okay. We'll eat later. I'm going to start packing the tent up because today's slightly warmer, but it feels colder because it's breezy. This thing sat with all the fresh kindling for the past 20 minutes while I cleaned up. I just blew at it a few times and it, poof, combust. So, I'm going to go ahead and find some more twigs and sticks I can throw in there. Maybe get enough heat for a quick breakfast. Look at that, I melted a little tiny spot in the snow. I think that's where my hips were sitting because I was laying on my side like that. That looks really pretty, the sun, the sun going and shining through all the snow falling every time the wind blows. Nice sunny day. Here's gonna be a quick breakfast. So this thing was easy. It, it combusted by throwing some things in and mixing it around. Didn't put anything too big. We just need quick heat for about 10, 15 minutes to get that nice and warm. Just some dry kindling. It'll make some big flames for a short amount of time. Who knows, maybe it'll even combust those logs I just threw in there and get all that stuff burning. So it'll be nice and empty to load the firebox up next time if we're going to use the smoker. I'll probably wait until nicer weather to use the smoker again. Because I can come out here with the chainsaw, cut up these logs that have been down a couple years. And that'll fuel this thing for a long time. I want to cook a whole turkey in there. Maybe in the summer when it's nice and warm. And I can maintain it for a full day without it being so cold.
It's now been about 10 minutes and this thing heated up pretty nicely. Go up top, our food is steaming. I just put my finger in it, it's nice and warm. And if you look really carefully, the fireplace actually put some pepper on it. No, it's actually ash, but it looks like pepper. All right, everyone, we're all set. Everything's cleaned up. I just had a quick breakfast, and this thing will probably burn for another hour or two. Then it'll maybe smolder the big log for part of the day. But everything's snow covered. It can be left unattended. This tank actually makes it relatively safe even when it's dry out in the summer. It contains any sparks. Up top, you can add a spark arrestor on it, which is kind of cool. I hope today's video was interesting, everybody. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. That sure froze fast. So the strapping system on the sleeping bag actually helps a lot with compressing it. But I doubt I will ever get it back in its factory bag. Because remember, I had such an issue even getting it out of the factory bag when I got it. So I think I'm just not going to use the factory bag and put this back on the shelf.